Okay. What you're about to witness, if this works a second time, is one of the first fusion reactions using water as a fuel source. I call this the Lazar reactor. Kind of uh, stupid to name it after myself. <laughs> that would just be uh, conceited. I actually named this the uh, Lazar reactor because if anyone who's watching this has ever heard of Bob Lazar, you'd know this is a man who claimed to work from in Area 51 and Bob Lazar uh, believed that the government was trying to kill him uh, after he left Area 51 because of certain security violations and uh, to save himself from this fate he actually decided to go public with all of his secrets. You can find uh, any number of his videos on YouTube and various other locations. They're public videos. You could buy them, so on and so forth. Uh, and in one of his videos, he actually explained how uh, the reactor in one of the alien spacecraft worked. Um, Again, he believed if he told his secrets to the public that uh, the damage would already be done and they would leave him alone and stop trying to kill him. So anyway, one of his secrets was uh, how the reactor inside of an alien spacecraft worked. Now, the reactor in an alien spacecraft, according to him, uses antimatter, obviously, a material that is impossible for most of us to reproduce but the a lot of the uh, ideas behind this reactor are based off of his according to him uh, in in alien spacecraft the uh, reactor generates antimatter by combining two materials together then the antimatter is uh, funneled into a chamber where it is mixed with matter. There is an explosive reaction, and the end result is a tremendous amount of heat is created. The heat is then absorbed by uh, thermoelectric cells and converted into electricity. Obviously, my reactor does not use antimatter. What it does use is hydrogen to create this tremendous amount of heat and the heat is converted into electricity using uh, standard thermoelectric cells which humans also have created. Uh, these cells were purchased, the rest of the electronics were also purchased in uh, very commonplace uh, electronic stores. You can buy half of this stuff to, to make this in Radio Shack. Uh, some of the other materials you have to kind of look for, for example, the thermoelectric cells, you're not going to find in a common electronics store, but you could buy them online. And what my reactor does is, again, it uh, generates hydrogen and actually mixing it with oxygen and igniting it creates an explosive reaction. The heat is absorbed by thermoelectric cells and converted into electricity. The uh, Hydrogen and oxygen are generated from pure water. And what the entire process entails is that the water is actually split 
the molecules are split using a process called electrostalsis. The uh, hydrogen and oxygen are released, mixed together into the in the chamber as a gas. The uh, hydrogen atoms are split using a 10,000 volt electrical arc, high voltage, low current, and once split, it uh, creates an explosive reaction. The reaction actually uh, generates a massive amount of heat, and the heat fuses the oxygen and hydrogen atoms back together to create water again. And the heat is then absorbed by the thermoelectric cells, producing electricity. Now, you'll notice, perhaps on the chamber walls, the chamber being transparent, uh, there is actually an excessive amount of moisture. That is because I've actually successfully done this one time. The moisture is the water, is the hydrogen and oxygen having fused back together to create water again after having been converted into hydrogen and oxygen from the water at the bottom of the chamber in the first place. Uh, once it was converted to hydrogen and oxygen gas and ignited, the heat was created, fusing the hydrogen and oxygen back together into water which then accumulated on the side of the chamber. Uh, after a few cycles of this, there would probably be enough water to uh, fall back down into the chamber to be reused again. But uh, the heat which was created to not only fuse the hydrogen and oxygen back into water was also absorbed to produce uh, 3.7 volts of electricity for 13 seconds and after that 13 second period it dropped down to 2.1 volts for an additional 11 seconds. Now that might not sound like a big deal but we're talking about generating electricity using nothing but water. Well, we're going to try this again. Now I had to open up the top of the chamber slightly to release some pressure because the last time, unfortunately, almost blew my face off. You can actually see here that gas coming out of the water. That is the hydrogen and oxygen currently being produced. Now we're going to start engaging the arc. Hopefully this will ignite before accumulating enough in the chamber to become dangerous and a, a dangerous explosion. It was actually kind of scary when it happened the first time. Um, I will say it was probably the most beautiful flame I've ever seen. It actually spun in the chamber as a vortex and it actually kind of looked like a flower made out of fire. It's probably going to take a while to accumulate enough hydrogen to do this again. But we're going to give this a little bit of time. As you can see, those bubbles coming up now rather large. That is actually larger bubbles of hydrogen as the uh, electrostalsis circuits warm up. More and more hydrogen is produced. And voila! Now let's see what kind of voltage that pole.
as you can see voltage was generated by the thermoelectric cells I've now shut it down and we're going to take the top off and I'll show you what it actually is this is the thermoelectric core this is what converts the heat into electricity and that right there the metal plating at the bottom is what actually splits the water molecules and the electrodes are those red things that you see sticking out that's what ignites the hydrogen and that was a fairly successful demonstration a lot less explosive this time because I opened up the top and it was actually interestingly a double explosion so it seems like the hydrogen ignited partially in the bottom and then reignited the rest which floated to the top and a large amount was produced here this is my hydrogen production system another experiment bubbles you can see coming out of the top this is a uh, a secondary larger core which actually produces hydrogen as you can see spewing from the top there uh, again using water this guy simply produces hydrogen this is the chamber where the secondary core exists and it is also ignited and the thermoelectric cells reside in the top cylinder there this is the beginning of true fusion we're talking about a process of converting water using an electrolyte into a mixture of hydrogen oxygen gas which are combined in a chamber where they are ignited the heat refuses the hydrogen and oxygen together to change it back into water to be reused and the heat is also absorbed by the thermoelectric cells producing electrical current there is only two thermoelectric cells in this configuration this is a very simple prototype but one day it is possible to build a system which uses many thermoelectric cells a larger chamber much more hydrogen is produced at lower currents than are produced uh, that than is produced by the thermoelectric cells and ignited allowing for greater electrical production instead of using two thermoelectric cells like in this prototype design you could have a chamber which contains hundreds and would be able to generate equal amounts of electricity using um, the equivalent amounts of hydrogen as in a lesser model like this one this is the future to producing electricity not fossil fuels this device will allow for production of electricity with absolutely no toxins produced in the environment and using a fuel source namely water 
which is something we have essentially an infinite abundance of on this planet. This is the key to the future of clean energy. Not biodiesel, not hybrid cars. Hydrogen production and electro electrothermal generation. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.